2021 has been an incredibly tough year for anything related to Facebook ads, you know, from rising ad costs to just data not being presented in the ads manager, but does it have to be like this? So in this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my framework where I go about diagnosing my Facebook ads to make sure I can make the right decisions at the right time so I can increase profitability for my e-commerce brands. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so to start things off, guys, I don't ever wanna be someone who says, hey, you need to go do these things without actually doing them myself, All right? So what you're seeing on the screen right here is my daily tracking spreadsheet for one of my test stores. As you can see right now from the October 1st all the way through to October 13th, there's a lot of green here, right? So that means with the GP, right, gross profit. Now, I have another spreadsheet that calculates total net profits, but overall, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we want. We want to be profitable. We want to be consistently always in the green, right? So let me show you exactly how I do this. Okay, so step number one of my framework is to actually make sure that every single one of my ads that I go ahead and publish has this UTM tag on it, okay? What this is going to allow you to do, and I'm gonna show you in a second, is to gain some visibility back about where your sales are coming from. Now, granted, you need to be getting sales for this to work, but as you can see here, this is the UTM code, and pretty much it's going to, what you need to do is just copy it, right? And I will link it in the description below. And when you're in the ad section, go ahead and just copy it into the URL parameters at the very bottom, all right, like so. Okay, now once that's done, you go ahead and publish and next we're gonna go into the Shopify platform. Okay, so now we are in my Shopify dashboard and I want you guys to go ahead and look at analytics and go to reports, okay? So what you need to go ahead and do is go down to the all the way to the very bottom. Now, what you wanna have a look at is the sales attributed by marketing, right? Click on this, okay? And now let's just select the first to the third, 13th which is you know the time that we're doing it. As you can see here with the UTM campaign name, I can start to see where my sales are coming from, all right? So what you wanna go ahead and do is go into this edit column section and go down all the way down to the bottom. Let's get rid of marketing event target and type, okay? Then what you wanna go ahead and do is make sure you have select your UTM campaign content like so, and as you can see, right, now you can start to see your ad sets. So this is your campaign name in column number one, and then campaign content is your ad sets, right? Then what you wanna go ahead and do is click on your UTM campaign term. This is what is going to allow you to see your ads, all right? Now this is going to be super crucial, but I won't reveal it right here. I want you guys to watch it all the way through to the end, I'll reveal it right at the end. All right, so let's move on to step number two. Step number two of my framework is to actually go into the ad that we're running and testing right now to have a look at what customers are saying and what kind of vibe they're giving off on your ad. Now, I'm using indestructible shoes as an example, but let me show you exactly what I'll do. I wanna go down, you wanna filter it by newest, and then you wanna see how recent these comments or how frequently these comments are coming in. Now, if people are engaging and people are commenting, they're liking, sharing, whatever, right? If they're doing these things, that is a very, very positive sign. Now, the next thing that you wanna get a feel of is what kind of vibe are they giving off from your ad? If they're saying, you know, it's a scam, all these kinds of negative comments, then that's a kind of red flag to say, mm, maybe this ad doesn't really speak to them, maybe the messaging is off, blah, 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 right? But if they're saying, hey, I love this, they're tagging friends and they're saying, I want this, where can I get it? That is a very, very positive sign. Now, this isn't a data-driven thing. We just wanna do like a emotional check from our customers because if this, all of these people are engaging, commenting, all these things this tells facebook that hey look this is a really high quality ad let's drive high quality customers to this ad because one it's providing value and these advertisers know what they're doing and are going to provide value to the customers throughout the whole customer buying process so this is kind of like a feeling out step of my framework is not a 100 percent data driven step but this is kind of necessary to let me know that hey i can scope and scale this ad now the next couple steps of my framework is to actually jump into the ads manager and have a look at what Facebook is ranking us and telling us about our ads that we're testing right now. So what I want you guys to do is go into the ads manager for yourself, follow along with me, right? Now press this button right here and then go to performance and clicks. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna change the column setup. Now what I wanna look at and what I want you guys to look at at the beginning is this quality ranking. So go to the ads section of your ads manager, right? And then have a look for these three columns, quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking. What these are is Facebook is going ahead and ranking your ads compared 
compared to the audience that you're testing and targeting. Now, there are different ranks for this and they are above average, which is the highest and all the way at the lowest, which is below average, which is the bottom 10% of ads, right? So if you guys are consistently getting below average, whether it be bottom 35, 20 or 10% of all ads, this tells you that, you know, and kind of giving you a warning flag that's saying, hey, you, your audience doesn't like your ad, meaning that maybe you didn't do the research properly when you were preparing your ads, right? There's some kind of inconsistency there. Your customers don't like it. And as a result, Facebook has deemed your ad to be below average compared to all of the other ads. Now, why do you need to care about this? This is important because Facebook, based on this, right? determines your overall bid in the Facebook ad auction. So if you guys have below average ads, right, it's not getting much engagement, blah, blah, blah. That's going to increase your CPMs. It's also going to increase your cost per clicks. And also it's going to affect your overall conversion rates, right? Because less people going to your sites, it's more expensive and just less profitability. Okay. The next thing that I want you guys to do is go ahead and have a look at these three metrics. Now, these three metrics are more vanity metrics, which is your CPM, your cost per click, and also your click through rate. Right? Right? So obviously you guys, you should know what these things are if you're running Facebook ads, right? But let me give you some general gists and general guidelines for each of these numbers. So for your cost per click, right? You kind of want to have your, you know, your ad or your cost per click set at 150 as a maximum. Maybe you can teeter around the $2, right? But generally speaking, $2 is absolute max. If it's any more than that, it means that, you know, people just aren't clicking. They're not finding your ad congruent to whatever they want and therefore they're just not clicking. So you need to do a better job of understanding what they want and making sure your marketing message is catered to them, right? In terms of your CPM, right? Generally you want to have like 15 to 20. That's kind of what I have in my ad account e-commerce is kind of around that 20 maybe even 30 range if you're a little bit above that maybe you're in a really competitive niche but you know it's that's kind of the guideline all right now in terms of your click-through rate you want to always have it around a, at least a 1.5 right if it's underneath it's okay it doesn't mean that it's at the end of the world as long as you're getting conversions as long as you're profitable but if you guys are underneath any of these benchmarks it tells you that there is some room for improvement okay so now let's have a look at the cpms right here and also everything else. So CPMs overall was $23 and this is in Australian dollars as well guys. So if I do the quick conversion right to USD, okay, 17 US dollars is my CPM. Good, right? Check. Now the next thing, cost per clicks, $1.84, right? $1.84 AUD to USD. $1.37 cost per click. No red flags there. I can continue on. All right. Now let's have a look at the click through rate. 1.7, 1.4, 1.5, my overall 1.3, right? So this obviously there is a little bit of room of for improvement here. Now this it won't be like a deal breaker. It's not just like, hey, look, it, because my click through rate is lower than 1.3, I can't go ahead and scale. Okay. So this is kind of what I want to do. I want to get those I want to use these vanity metrics and also these rankings to have a look at where am I and where are my ads in terms of the auction? Is it is it positive? Are we in a good position to scale? Well, you just want to have a look and make sure that there are no red flags here regarding your cost per click, click the rate and CPMs. Okay. So finally, let's move on to the last part of the framework. Okay, so the final step of the framework is to actually go ahead and calculate your marketing efficiency ratio, as well as your overall return on ad spend. Now, that is exactly what this spreadsheet does. It goes and tracks your overall spend versus your overall revenue, right? And then calculates for you your overall return on ad spend. Now, if you guys don't know the formula, it is simply your overall revenue divided by your overall spend. And that's going to give you a ROAS, right? Now on the right here, you can see that I have a break even ROAS reference point of 1.61. What you need to go ahead and do is compare what your overall ROAS was against your break even ROAS. And if you guys are profitable, that tells you, oh yeah, there is a good chance that you can scale this ad. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and tie it all together. Let's start with step number five, which is looking at your overall MER and your overall ROAS. If you, when you're comparing it to your break-even ROAS, it was above, that means, okay, you're profitable. All right. So now what you need to do is go back to step one, have a look at your UTM tags in Shopify or in Google analytics and have a look and try to find the ad that is driving the most sales, right? Or the ads that are driving the most sales. Then what you want to go ahead and do is actually have a look at the ad itself 
to check whether or not there is consistent and recent engagement on the ad. And what's the general vibe of what people are saying? Are, are people positive or are people negative, right? If they're positive, okay, another good check mark, right? Now we move on to steps number three and four, which is actually having a look at what the ads manager is telling us. If your Facebook is ranking your ad as a high quality or above average compared to all of the other ads on the platform, that is also another check. Then the next step is to have a look at your click through rate, your cost per click and your CPM and have a look at if there's any red flags there. If they're kind of in your ordinary means and kind of within the benchmarks, so your click through rate is above 1.5%, your cost per click is below $1.50 and also your CPM is kind of like around the 15, 20, whatever's average for your niche, right? So if all of those, you, you've got five checks, right? Then you can go ahead and scale. 